Have you ever had a vision for a photo shoot where you want like a bunch of different hands in the scene, you need a bunch of different people, but you're shooting it by yourself? You're like, how do I clone myself? I'm gonna show you how to do that here today, just like I did in this shot. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography, and the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you feel confident behind the camera. And today I'm gonna walk you through the behind the scenes of this Thanksgiving dessert spread and how I cloned myself. And this was all inspired from a lesson here in my book, Picture Perfect Food. And it's all about, there's a specific lesson in here talking about shooting like bigger table scenes and serving things family style because a lot of times I find I don't know if this is your experience too I get really keyed into like just a singular dish like the final dish but there is so much fun to be had in the world of food photography and creativity we can put into place when we think about a bigger scene and incorporating like multiple dishes and kind of that bigger storytelling component. Now, if you're looking at the scene and going, whoa, whoa, hold up, Joni. Like, I am not ready for pumpkin season. What are you doing shooting Thanksgiving in August? Well, truth be told, when you work in the industry of food photography, maybe you've already experienced this, we shoot a lot of holiday campaigns in the summertime because it takes a lot of lead time to get prepared for like all the holiday stuff, the magazines, the catalogs, all that stuff gets done well in advance. So it is not atypical for the holly and the pumpkins and the turkeys and all that fun to happen in the summertime. So here is that final image and I'm just gonna take you kind of step by step all through the creative process, decision making. So of course it starts out with that idea. I know we're doing a Thanksgiving spread and so I need a big enough table so fortunately I have this table here in the studio already. It's kind of a nice 10 seater table, plenty of room for everybody. And I love this warm wood. We actually recently refinished this and stained it a little bit darker. So I just love that richness. And I thought, oh, that'll look really good with pumpkin pie and pecan pie and all the fixins. So now before we jump into the styling, let's talk about my favorite thing, right? The lighting. And so doing a super simple lighting setup for this. I've just got one light. Cause I was thinking, you know, if we're at a dining room table, a lot of times dining room tables are sort of positioned near like one big window. So let's create a nice big soft light source. So in this case, I'm going with a single strobe inside of a 150 centimeter octagon soft box. Again, creating that nice soft light, but kind of moving it a little further away as if it's in the position where a window would be. I've had that recommendation here plenty of times, like in the Kukaloras video. If you're looking to create a particular natural light look in a scene with artificial light, just think about like where would the window be inside of the room how would it interact with the table and the scene? And two, I just placed it slightly up in the corner because I knew that would cast some diagonal shadows, adding a little bit of dimension to that final image. And then when I need a camera overhead, you know the drill. I'm working with the C-stand here today. Video is linked down below if that's some new information for you. But one thing you'll see though that is different than I usually do with this C-stand is I've got that puppy really hiked up pretty high and it's also that arm is really fully extended. I usually don't take it that far out, but because I needed such a wide view, I needed to take that arm further than I usually do. So I really made sure from a stability standpoint, I did use a sandbag to really help to cement that and anchor it so that that camera wouldn't just topple over onto the table. That'd be bad news. And then of course, because that camera is so physically high and I can't see the back of the LCD screen and two, because I'm gonna have so many different components in the scene and because it's just the way I generally like to work is I am shooting tethered and I am tethered into Capture One. If you have not used Capture One before, if you've not shot tethered, if you wanna get started in that department, well, I've got some information about that, link down below. So now next let's talk about props. One of my favorite things to talk about, right? So as I was thinking through, okay, I'm shooting pumpkin pie, pecan pie, those are both brown. And then I've got a brown table. Okay, I'm getting a little nervous and we got coffee. <laughs> like, oh, there's a lot of brown on brown on brown, which we absolutely could do, but it is kind of nice to create a little bit of separation and help to differentiate some of these key elements from the background, especially because again, there's gonna be so much going on in the scene to really help just direct the viewer where to look. And so I thought a table runner would be really helpful for that. So I selected this cream colored table runner that kind of went with this kind of like organic feel, kind of feels a little rustic. It's not over the top. Like, you know, I think Thanksgiving can sometimes get like the, you know, Martha Stewart and we've got these elaborate centerpieces. And that's just not, that's not Thanksgiving at my house. I don't know about your house, but I like to make it nice. I like to make it special. 
special. And so that's why I'm pulling in things like my grandma's crystal glasses and the crystal candy dishes. But I also like to be practical and, you know, not make it too over the top. I like it to be casual and comfortable. So that's why we've got just this simple runner, other simple things to prop out the scene. And in terms of composing all these different elements, something I talk about in the book that I absolutely did here was thinking about like, okay, if I was to actually set this table, like I had people coming over later for dessert, where would I put the plates? Where would I put the glasses? Where would everything go? And really kind of working from there and then adjusting and shifting. If I'm like, eh, I just kind of want the water glass inched a little bit more over here or I want this napkin unfolded you know kind of then deconstructing from there but really building it from a place of if this were real life if this were actually happening that can be a really great starting place to work from but now here comes the tricky part where I get a little extra creative is again I had this idea of I want actual like the human elements in the scene like people's hands interacting with the food so it's not just like food sitting on a table but it's the people interacting with it too it can really engage the viewer in a unique way but knowing that it's also just me and I don't want just like one set of hands, I want multiples, right? Because this is a family meal, this is a holiday. So how do I incorporate multiple sets of hands if it's just myself? Well, with a little bit of forethought and then also Photoshop, we can absolutely make this happen. So the very first thing I thought of is, okay, well, where do I want the hands entering the scene and how do I want them interacting with the scene? So I thought from a composition standpoint, it would make a lot of sense to create sort of this triangular pattern, like one set of hands coming in from the upper left one coming in from the side and then the lower left right so sort of this nice little triangular create some visual balance but then I also thought like obviously my hands are gonna look very consistent like it's the same manicure <laughs> from set of hands to Santa hands and so I thought oh let's make this like artistic and the idea of like me putting the pie in the scene and then me serving the pie and then me putting the whipped cream on the pie right like as if it's a time-lapse all in one shot or at least that's the story I'm sticking to in this case but I've got those hands hands then coming in from the upper left of the frame, right? Bringing in that main uncut pecan pie. And so what I did is, you know, kind of position the hands, position, and I'm, I'm working from tethered again, and I've got the live view on Capture One, so I can kind of get a gauge for, okay, where is the pie? Do I have it exactly where I want? But now here's where it is a little funny, right? Because I have both hands in the scene, and I, I do this all the time. You can, you know, use your foot, you can use all sorts of, you know, whatever you need to get the job done, but I just put the trigger in my mouth. Again, this is that Yang Nuo RF603 set that I've shared about before. If you want more info, I'll link it down below. But it's just one button, so it's pretty easy to push if I just stick it in my mouth and I just bite down and it starts firing the shutter for me. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to get the shot, right? I remember the first time I ever did this like in front of somebody else. I was doing this for a cookbook and I was holding a cake with both hands and the chef who was preparing the cake. I was like, okay, we're ready. And then like, I've got the trigger in my mouth and I'm taking the picture. He's like, what the heck are you doing? It's like, this is, this is the way it happens, right? But so once we've got those hands then with the pecan pie, then we're good. So now it's time to move on to then that second position and pulling out then that slice of pumpkin pie. And really, again, thinking about like, okay, as we're inserting hands into the scene, like how is that affecting other components in the scene? Do we need to adjust anything else? Like, are we blocking anything else? Thinking about, are we blocking the lighting? So just putting my hands kind of there in the side, also being very mindful of like how do the hands look. This is again why it's really helpful to have live view for tethering so we can see, okay, we want kind of the nice delicate hands. We don't want, you know, these intense gripping claws and things like that. So then taking another shot with the hands, serving up the pie. And then for the final set of hands, moving to that final position, the all important whipped cream on the pumpkin pie. To me, it is not pumpkin pie without whipped cream, very important. And so just kind of getting that little scoop in that doll, anticipating putting that on the pie. Now, once we have those three individual images, the hands look great, we've got those individual actions in each of those images, then go ahead and edit those photos. So, you know, do the contrast and clarity, any color adjustments, all that good jazz like we do in our editing software, whether that be Capture One or Lightroom. And then from there, taking those images right over into Photoshop. So we've taken those three different images of the hands in the three different positions and combined them all into this one final shot. And I've also, you can see, left this uncropped here in Photoshop because I do all the cropping once I get back over into Capture One or if you're using Lightroom, because then I'm gonna maybe potentially crop it in different ways depending on where that image is gonna be placed. So when I'm working here in Photoshop and doing the composite work or retouching, I go with the uncropped image because I can always crop it later. 
matter. But what you can see here, I'm going to give you the high level overview. If you need a deeper dive into like getting started in Photoshop and really want to master Photoshop for food photography specifically, my friend Rachel has a fantastic course all about retouching food photography. We've got a link down below. So if some of this feels overwhelming or you don't understand what I'm talking about, I highly recommend checking that out. It is such a great resource. But we can go ahead and I'm going to turn off the very top layer. We're just going to work with these two right now just so you can kind of see what I'm working with. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer mask. OK, so just imagine that this layer is not here, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. We can see what's underneath. This is that base layer. And then we've got the layer that I like the best with the pie. But I only want the pie and I want to be able to see what's underneath on the base layer. Right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to activate this layer and then we're going to create a layer mask by hitting this button right here. Now, this layer mask right now is white. And when things are white, we can see everything that's there. But when we have black there, it is concealed. So we use black conceals, white reveals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and invert that layer mask by hitting Control I. It's turned that layer black now. So that mask is black. So I cannot see what is there, right? So if I turn this off and on, we, we can don't see anything, right? Because we're able to see that bottom layer because that layer mask right now is black. But if I go ahead and pick up the paint brush, so I've got the brush tool right here and that brush tool is currently on white. And so if I paint white over top of this mask, it's going to start to reveal what's underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see, aha, there's my hand. There is what's happening underneath. And I like the way that the coffee looked better on the other <laughs> shot as well. And so we can go ahead and start to paint in those specific things that we want to keep. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'm not going to be super precise here because it takes a little bit of extra time. I had to do a little bit of surgery here on the side to get the candy dish, everything just right. We also want to be mindful of the way that the shadows are being cast a little bit differently. You know, when we start to incorporate things like hands into the scenes, well, they start to cast different shadows than if the hands weren't there. So that's always a telltale sign of when you see something and you're like, wait, that's not how the shadows would be or that's not how the light would be. You go, ah, oh, we got some Photoshop going on. So making sure to incorporate all of these shadows so that it looks much more realistic. There we go. So now I think I got most of it. We can see over here, too, if we look at that layer mask, you can see what's black and what's white. What's white is where we have painted. So I was just missing a little thing. Right here, sometimes you got some little black specks. You go, oh, I forgot, I forgot, I missed that guy. Okay, paint him back in. So now if I come in and I just do a little quick conceal, reveal, right? Because we've painted that on. So all we can see from that layer is what has been painted white. Whereas everything that's still in black, we can see what was underneath of it. And so we're doing the same exact thing then with the pumpkin pie. I can go ahead and activate that layer. You can see if I disable that layer mask as if that layer mask wasn't there, we see that full image. But then when we have the layer mask, where I have painted in just that little piece of the pumpkin pie, you can see that it's just altered that part of the image. And so that's effectively how we have combined those three different layers into one. So then once that final image is built, we have all three sets of hands. We feel great. We've got that final image. Just hit S for save. It's going to pop it right back over into Capture One for me as a TIFF file. And then from there, from Capture One, I can export it like usual, post it wherever it is that I'm intending to use it. And we have our Thanksgiving celebration. But now hopefully this has got some of those creative juices flowing, some new ideas kind of going through your mind. And how can we make a bigger scene? How can we make this family style incorporate more of that storytelling? But now at this point, the only thing I need is you here to help me enjoy this pie because I got too much pie to eat by myself. <laughs> so if you're in the neighborhood, pop on by. I got a slice for you. But as always, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a fantastic week. You stay out of trouble and I'll see you soon. All right. Bye.